Okay, Kevin, so hopefully you've had a go at doing this painting here now. Um, as I said, you might just do it a few times to refine it. I did talk about in the video doing a few paintings um, so that we can build up to play around with and obviously just to refine your skills. I've also had a go at doing, like I mentioned in the last video, the exact same technique we did here, but using browns and blacks to create that layers. And you can see I haven't put as many of the plants, the bright, colourful, kind of happy plants, the leaves, keep it a little bit bare a bit dead, almost like twigs at the bottom. But the same technique, the lighter colour building up to the heavier, darker colour. So we have this comparison here of the alive plants and the dead plants. And I'd love you to make a few of these. You can see doing a very few, mine are a little bit quick studies. You can maybe do a few more, maybe spend a bit more time on some of the little details. But you can see I've started building up a few, a collection of a few of them now. What I think we want to do next is start considering how we could construct a piece a little bit inspired by Maria Ortega Estepa, this piece here. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. We did talk about potentially doing it in a circle. First thing you're going to want to do is, as I said, do a few little paintings for yourself and start ripping them out. And start ripping them out. Don't cut them, just rip them. We want to keep these organic, natural lines. Okay, change the direction, sometimes going that way, sometimes going that way. Maybe rough it up even more than that, we can probably damage it a bit more. And we want to basically just rip them out so we have all of these. And just pause and I'll do that. Okay, so I have my pieces ripped out, you can see there, different sections. Uh, what you want to just start doing now is essentially just playing around with some composition. So again, a really good thing you could do here to develop your pages is as you decide to move them around, maybe get yourself a white background or something to do that with, you can start playing around with some compositions and actually just photographing it. So photographing that there and putting it in your book. This shows good compositional practice, just like when we do our thumbnail designs, uh, when we're having design ideas, for you to start playing around with these and saying, oh, do I want to have it like that? Do I want to have it like that? If you photograph these different layers, photograph, put it in, you can annotate them and to show that you're considering different layouts and different techniques. Very good for a little bit of extra development and design ideas. So Maria Tegra Stepa, in her work, we can see that kind of change with, let me show you again, the lighter part of the picture on the inside, as if you're looking up, we discussed how it's almost like you're looking up through the trees. So we could try something like that. What I thought potentially you could try is having the dead trees on the inside and then your alive trees all spreading out. You might want to re-rip them, take them down lower. As you're shaping it, consider how you want it to look. So maybe you could have your more alive trees working around the edge. And as you try these out, you're going to work out what kind of works for you and what doesn't. So straight away, what I think as I'm putting this around is I don't like these gaps in between. I don't think they work very well. So that I might refine this idea and say, actually, and push it forward a bit more. I don't like that it kind of looks like a bit like a weird flower. I'm not loving that. I don't like these gaps in between, how these are quite blocky and square. So I might sit there and say, OK, my next piece of work, I'm going to make sure I actually cut out an A3 piece of paper that already has that curve. And I'm going to make sure I do my trees all the way around. So it's already circular, a bit like this work here. And I'm going to make sure I paint my trees all the way around. But this gives me an idea of how I want to do that. All the trees are going to be pointing into the centre. You might like it this way. You know, I might sit there and say, OK, I don't love it that way. If I put them closer together, actually, I think when I put them closer together, I think that works a lot better. So maybe I can do it in separate pieces like this. I just need more. So rather than have them more separate just to make it easier, I actually just really need to overlap them that little bit more, which means I'm going to need a hell of a lot more of these. I just if we just try half a circle it's worth considering while you're doing this as well the size is this size working for you there we go i potentially don't it's thinking about whether or not you like the dark brown going into the lighter blue when we see the picture here it goes from like that darker color and so comes in lighter so, you know, that's something to consider. Why are we putting the, the dead inside and the lighter on the outside? What's the symbolism of that? What's the meaning behind it? So you can play around with some different compositions. Ultimately here, there's some kind of contrast saying this is what it should look like. This is what it looks like because of what we're doing to it. OK, at the moment, the trees actually aren't chopped down the ones I've painted here. They're actually just bare and dying. So maybe you want to paint some stumps rather than full trees. Maybe you want to have a few stumps in here. Or maybe the next stage is going to be just tree stumps. Maybe you'll have three stages. 
It could be you decide to do a big half semicircle with this, then the trees, then the stumps. And it's like we're taking away our environment in stages. Okay, you have to think about how you want to structure this and how it will work best for you. But I could see this working very well if you can refine these techniques. Um, obviously, we've already talked about, I haven't got any scissors, potentially incorporating some natural greenery into this world. As I said to you before, you could try out, you can get some twigs and things like that. You could get yourself some actual pieces of, this is actually a plastic plant I've got, chopping some pieces off of it. You could, especially to break up those gaps, get yourself some actual greenery in there, maybe some twigs into the middle to overlap some of it. That could work quite well for overlapping. You could also just cut out some coloured shaped pieces of paper. I'd love to see you doing some experimentation with this work. Maria Ortega Estepa, a lot of her work is about experimentation. Let me find an example picture. If we see a picture of hers like this, this one here, you can see all of the build up of she has some pen drawing in there. She has almost what looks like spray painted silhouettes in there from her watercolours and she rips them all up and she overlaps them. So consider what else you could try with experimentation. Could you go and pick some leaves or some leaf shapes like this? And if you've got any way of painting around them or printing, I could cover this in paint and maybe stamp it onto paper and see if that does anything. If I covered it all in paint and then pressed it down onto a piece of paper, I'd get some imprints of leaves. I could, if I had, if you have a spray bottle of any kind, you could lay a few twigs and leaves down on a piece of paper and spray water and paint or paint over. If you get some watercolour, mix it up and put it in a water spray bottle, you could spray it over it and get some silhouettes of leaves and shapes. So to develop this further and to push to a little bit higher level, you could find some different ways of experimenting. They do ask me if there's any you're thinking about. But I think this is building to look like quite an exciting final outcome.